Oh, well, the boy's kind of small. George Shrinks. Oh, but it doesn't show at all. George Shrinks. Because he's always acting tall. George Shrinks. Oh, George Shrinks, George Shrinks, he's called. Oh, if a problem should be found. George Shrinks. Oh, he's the boy to head around. George Shrinks. Oh, something big or something small. George Shrinks. Oh, George Shrinks, George Shrinks, he's called. George Shrinks seems to find a way to make his dreams come true each day. His brother Junior does a call. George Shrinks. Well, Dad, blows a bugle call. George Shrinks. And Mama keeps an eye on all. George Shrinks. George Shrinks. George Shrinks. George Shrinks. George Shrinks. George Shrinks. cooler than a sky full of stars. Except maybe a sky full of shooting stars. Later tonight, there's gonna be a meteor shower, and I don't want to miss a single speck of burning space stuff. Stars, George? A million, billion, trillion of them. There are over 100,000 million stars just in our galaxy. And then there are planets and moons and comets. Sure makes you wonder if we're really alone. Oh! Oh, good timing, Dad. Well, it just feels like a Scaramon Concerto kind of night. Hmm. Uh, that needs a bit more something. <laughs> oh, uh, that wasn't it. Be Eunice. Where did the time go? Harold, time to go. Hi, Eunice. Thanks so much for watching the boys. Oh, no problem, Perdita. Harold, Eunice is here. Whoa, a full moon. Full moons are good luck. Unless you're in werewolf country. Giving the kids nightmares. Ha ha ha! Good night, all. We're off to the movies. What are you gonna see? The latest cinematic masterpiece called uh ah, Mothership Down: The Return. You don't even like sci-fi. What about the boring movies you usually see? The ones that make you sniffle and Dad snooze. Well, uh, oh yeah, I don't know. Yes, sir. I don't know, just something kind of extraterrestrial in the air. It's an epic, so we'll be late. Mind your aunt, please. Oh, and George, I want you in bed by 9.30. But, Mom, most of the meteor shower won't even hit before 9.30. All right, dear, 10.30 sharp. No muss, no fuss. Thanks, Mom. Okay, you little stargazers. Now stay out of trouble and be fast asleep before we get home. Good night. Night, night. Good night. night. Hmm. What have we here? My, very interesting, Junior. Hmm. Junior, you drew the alien mothership. Alien? Yeah, uh, the one that landed in the backyard and came looking for the scaraman. Uh, never mind. Oh, George, I'm not such an old fuddy-duddy. Throughout time, people have spent their lives gazing at the stars and wondering what was out there. Many claim to see things similar to Junior's drawing flying through the sky. But I really saw it, or I dreamed I did. Some people believe these shapes exist deep in all our imaginations. They've inspired paintings from the Ukraine to the Yucatan. I've seen them on yakskin scrolls in the... <sighs> now, George, keep your eye out for meteors while Junior and I rustle up some space snacks. Eat meaty, boys? No, honey. Meteors are bits of rock and ice from space that burn up from the friction of rubbing against the Earth's denser atmosphere. We're going to eat some homemade Aunt Eunice cookies. <sighs> the first meteor! Huh? That's not a shooting star. Aunt Eunice, you, you gotta see this! 
In a second, George. Look at him go. Well, watch out for that wire. Uh-uh. It's coming this way. Can't watch the heavens with an empty stomach, can we, Junior? And Eunice, you won't believe what I just saw. A spaceship crash in our backyard, and I gotta go and help. <laughs> of course, George. You hustle on out and save the spaceship. Junior and I will watch for meteors. Uh, I'll be right back. <laughs> Nothing like an endless canopy of stars to fuel a young imagination. Okay, small ship, big yard. Where do I even start looking? Wow. Uh-oh, a couple more inches and that ship's gonna be swimming with the fishes. Gotcha! about the one that got away. Just my luck. An alien ship crash lands in my backyard and I lose it in the water hazard. If the aliens can build an intergalactic voyager that can withstand the friction of the Earth's atmosphere, why can't they build one that floats? I don't know how it is in other parts of the universe, but around here, if someone's space pod accidentally crashes into your pond, you help them out. No matter what side of the galaxy they're from. One alien spaceship, high and dry. I sure hope aliens build their ships waterproof. Uh-oh. I sure hope aliens can swim. Hey! Oh, wait for me! Are you sure it landed around here? The flux spectrometer says that the extraterrestrial activity is coming from this neighborhood. Just think, our first Class 5 extraplanar encounter. If we can just pinpoint where those ionized particles are emanating from. George go. If he isn't back soon, he's gonna miss the meteors. George! Right here, Aunt Eunice. Uh, did you notice anything, uh, unusual going on here? Just you playing games when there's homemade cookies with your name on them. What on earth is that? I think that's just what I'm looking for. Excuse me. I'm not gonna hurt you. Look out! Uh... George, are you okay? I'm fine, Aunt Eunice. But the uh, scareman's not doing so well. Uh oh, smashy, smashy. Oh my, George! What happened? Uh, well, I can explain. It's just you're not gonna believe me. Try me. Well. The alien ship crashed in the pond, so I guess the little alien wanted to use the scareman to call for help, but I surprised him, and he knocked it over, and that round part you're holding broke off and rolled down the steps, and now he's hiding in the box. You don't say. You believe me? Now I do. You can talk to him? Oh, I picked up a few phrases in Katmandu. The locals said it was the language of the little people from the sky. <laughs> I thought they were pulling my leg. That is the coolest! Yes! You learn lots of nifty things when you're exposed to different sorts of people. Really? Hmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. That is quite the pickle. What's he saying? Well, first of all, he is a she. Her name is Managishi. She's a junior scout who flew a bit off 
course, and you're right, George. She's stuck here without any way of calling her friends. Oh, she's stranded. Well, we'll help her get home. Help, Manny. Yeah. Uh, can we call you Manny? 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 Manny! I don't have any idea how to get this thing flying again. Hitting the telephone pole was bad enough. But dunking in the pond really didn't help. Well, we'll just have to wait until Dad gets home. He can fix anything. Of course. Why didn't I think of that? I'm afraid Manny can't wait, George. The mothership has to leave orbit before the meteor shower hits with or without our little friend here. Maybe we can get the radio to work. Okay, we start with Manny's radio because we need the right frequencies and stuff. Plug into my walkie-talkie to use a microphone. The megaphone makes the signal louder, and my supercar provides the power. And the signal goes out the rabbit ears. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Okay, Manny, are you ready? Here goes nothing. Are you hearing what I'm hearing? Words from another world! No! Words from this one! The transmission is coming from somewhere nearby! I'll get the portable scanner, infrared camera, and triangulators. And I'll get the night vision goggles, the sandwiches, and the autograph book. What's wrong, Manny? What are you doing, Manny? Hmm. <gasps> the signal's coming from around here. Quick, separate and triangulate. Who are those guys? And what are they up to? Oh, I'll take a wild guess it has something to do with a UFO crashing in your backyard. Uh-oh. What's wrong, Junior? Hey, where's Manny? Oh, dear. I hope she hasn't run off. If we don't get her back before the meteor shower, she'll be stuck here forever. Hey, Junior, where did she go? Manny, fly! No, uh, we can't get the spaceship to work. Uh, what are we gonna do? Manny, fly! Hey, Manny! Watch out! Whoa! Sheesh. Now I see why she crashed. Who'd have thought looking after someone so small would be so tough? And we're only trying to help, and all she does is dash off. Remind you of anyone? Who? Me? No way. I hardly ever go flying off and... Okay, well, there might be a couple of small similarities. It's around here somewhere. I can feel it. The stratospheric detector is going, uh, stratospheric. I think it's coming from the front yard. Let's go. Oh, why did I build a super plane to go so fast? Manny! Oh, you had us worried. I'm glad you're all right. <laughs> I wish I could say the same for the Zooper plane. She said she's sorry. Oh, it's too bad the Zooper plane can't fly high enough to get Manny to her ship. The Zooper... But maybe a Zooper rocket can. Ooh, rocket ship. That's a very sweet thought, George, but are you sure you want to give up your Zooper plane? Sure. Manny needs our help. Me help. That's my George. 
help your neighbor no matter how many light years away they might live. It's got to be close. The ionic pentameter is registering 11, and it only goes up to 10. There's an alien in the area, or our names aren't Carrie and Harry. Crack and put. Here you go, Junior. <laughs> Rocket control panel? Thank you, Junior. Hmm. That's some extraterrestrial teamwork. This should be the last piece. Going up. There. The Zuper rocket is ready for launch. What's wrong, Manny? She says that we're missing something. What did we forget? Don't have a clue, Georgie, dear. Manny! Manny! Those strange men are still out there! Manny! 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 <sighs> she can hide almost as well as I can. Meteor! <laughs> oh, dear, we're running out of time. The full force of the meteor shower will hit any minute. I need a better view. We got company. Goofus and Doofus at 2 o'clock. With all those fancy pants gadgets, they'll find Manny before we do. You keep looking for Manny. I'll give those two a close encounter they'll never forget. It's so close, I can smell it. Ready with the camera? Check. <gasps> the alien! Get him! Where'd he go? I don't know. I was following you. But I was following you. <laughs> there it is. I'll get it. He's running. The scientific community will never laugh at the Kraken Puts again. Look out, Carrie. It's coming out of its cocoon. Hey, guys. What's up? You're not an alien. Uh, no, I'm George. George Shrinks. Who are you? We're very serious, anomalous, extraterrestrial researchers. Better known as alien trackers to you civilians, our finely tuned scientific instruments indicated there was an alien around here. An alien? Cool. Where? Come on, Harry. I think our finely tuned instruments need some fine tuning. Nice meeting ya. Y'all come back now, you hear? After Manny safely back on the mothership. Any luck finding Manny? Sorry, George. We looked everywhere. What are we going to do now? How can we rescue our friendly neighborhood alien without the alien? Manny! Manny? You got the part. Where did you find it? Hmm. Well, what are you standing around for, George? You've got a rocket to finish. Bye, Manny. Have a safe trip. I packed some snacks, but I don't know what you eat. Or how you eat, for that matter. Tell her to go easy on the clutch, and uh, she drifts a little to the left. <gasps> ha! I knew we were right! Oh, no! My, Harry? Eunice? Harry? You need me? You know each other? Oh, Harry and I go way back. We met in the Himalayas and spent a wonderful weekend sightseeing in a Buddhist monastery on the Tibet border. You did what? Why do you want to hurt poor Manny? What did she ever do to you? Hurt her? Never. We're certified professional alien trackers, not jerks. We just want proof. <gasps> Manny! A photo, an original voice recording, maybe an autograph, right next to the Yeti thumbprint. No time for that. If Manny doesn't get back to the mothership before the rest of the meteor shower hits, she'll never get home. The Zuper Rocket's ready and waiting. If it's going up in that, 
<laughs> it's braver than I thought. What's wrong with the Zuper rocket? It looks very nice, but are you sure it's going to survive a 30-mile trip through negative 60-degree weather to get into outer space? We don't have a choice. Maybe we do. Where'd you guys get all this stuff? It came with the van. We got the extraterrestrial package with white walls and sporty pinstriping. Please don't touch anything. We don't even know how half this stuff works. It was right between that weird Las Vegas talk show and the uh, Golden Oldie station. Bingo! We picked up these strange signals. I figured they must be coming from this mothership of yours. Here, little guy. Manny's a girl. Sorry. Here, talk to your friends. He says, thank you for helping Manny. Oh, I mean, Manny Gishi, get back to the ship. And he's offering a visit to their home planet in return. <laughs> Ow. That would be the coolest thing ever, wouldn't it? Oh, it sure would. But I'm afraid we have to take a rain check. I promised your folks I'd have you kids in bed by 10.30. But Mom and Dad would understand. Or maybe they wouldn't. Ah, oh, okay. Uh, but tell them, uh, they can drop by for dinner next time they're in the solar system. Could you mention we'd love to go, if the offer's still open? Love to go? We've been waiting all our lives for a chance like this. And ask him if we could have an autograph. To Harry and Carrie. Carrie and Harry. Who's been tracking aliens longer? What are you talking he said they'd be honored if you'd join them. Mm. Ooh, meteor. <laughs> the meteor shower started. And we've got the best seats in the house. Wow. Manny says thank you, George, for being a good celestial neighbor and helping a stranger in need. But they've got to get home before the shower gets too dangerous. Okay. Uh, bye. I'm gonna miss you, Manny. Kids, we're home. Ah, oh, will you look at that? Oh, why? <laughs> Must have taken a little detour to the land of Nod. <laughs> Bob. Dad, you're back. Sure are, kiddo. Oh, and what a movie. You'd have loved it. Zap, pow, bam. Alien space travel. Uh, conspiracies. <laughs> you won't believe what happened here. An alien crash landed in the backyard. Then I rescued its ship from the pond. Then Harry and Carrie showed up. And we helped Manny get back to her mothership. And they took us for a ride up in space. It was great. That sounds suspiciously like the plot of the movie we just saw. Oh, George, you really do have your father's imagination. And your mother's crazy dreams. Imagination? Oh, did I leave that on all night? <laughs> no wonder you had bad dreams. But the alien and I broke the scarement. I'm afraid that's just wishful thinking, dear. <gasps> the meteor shower! I guess it could have been a dream, or even just our imaginations. But I like to believe it really happened. It'd be nice to think that we went out of our way to help a neighbor get home. 
Especially if that neighbor came all the way from across the galaxy. And who knows? Maybe Manny will come back and visit us someday. Mom says a good neighbor always has room for one more place at the table. I'd love to see her face when a whole spaceship full of aliens drops in for her famous meatloaf surprise. <laughs> <laughs>